and welcome back to Cats Science and Maths for the second episode of the YouTube Creator Cup GCSE Knockout. In this series, we are going to be pitting creators and uh, subscribers of those creators together to find out who is the overall champion of the internet when it comes to answering GCSE questions that we've probably all long forgotten since we were at school. This round sees a YouTuber with over 40,000 subscribers pitting themselves against a Conspiracy Cats patron who has their own doctorate. So without further ado, let's see who our YouTuber guest is. Right, so Mr. Godless Engineer, how are you doing, sir? You okay? Oh yeah, I'm doing fine. Just, you know, staying at home, not going outside, washing my hands constantly. It's uh it's it seems to be the way at the minute, doesn't it? It's uh, it's getting I'm getting bored. I don't know about you. I'm but I'm getting bored. <laughs> it's hard work. Well, I mean, I'm still I'm still technically working because I can telework, so it works out for me because I during the day I just I do all my normal work stuff just at home. And I do want to thank you for taking time out of your day to come and do this quiz. Uh, so we all know Godless Engineer, but it's time to learn a little bit more about our next contestant. All we know about him so far is that he's a Conspiracy Cats patron and he has a doctorate. So what else has he got to say? So here is our next contestant. It is Dr. Purcell, but he's assured me that he'd like to be called Tony. So Tony, um, thank you very, very much for uh, appearing. Do you want to just tell people a little bit about yourself? Um, sure. I'm a geophysicist. I live in Australia, um, uh, in Canberra, actually. And uh, at the moment, I'm spending a lot of time at home. So you're a, 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 geophys a geophysicist who lives on the underside of the globe. Uh, so you're essentially a flat earther's worst nightmare. But let's see if right now they can be each other's nightmare with a bit of trash talking. Oh, you know, I, I'm going to I'm going to answer these questions to the best of my abilities. And I think that my ability is probably better than your ability. So I guess that makes me better. Have you got any trash talk you want to give to your opponent for today? <laughs> um, uh, well, uh, I I can't help but I uh, think that uh, uh, people who uh, put a lot of time into um, preparing uh, YouTube videos are kind of narcissistic um, and they're not really doing anything constructive, let's face it. They're just entertainers. They're just entertainers. So, you know, um, now I'm not trash talking him. I'm just trash talking everybody. Yeah, it seems we're all getting it now. I quite like it. Uh, anything else you want to say to each other? I'm not good at trash talking people that I either don't know or like. I don't know. I'm too, I'm uncomfortable trash talking too badly because if I end up losing, that's going to make me feel really stupid. But anyway, it's alright. If you end up losing, I'll edit it out. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's fair enough. So let's dive into round one, which is our home and away round. Here, each contestant has chosen physics as being their specialist subject. In each of the five questions they are given, they'll be given the option to go home or away. If they take the home option, they'll be given a physics question for one point. And if they choose to be a little bit braver and go away, they could be asked a question on any GCSE subject worth two points. Let's see where Godless Engineer wants to kick off. So I just click go. Everybody at home who's watching can see the questions. You can't. Would you like... Oh, no, I've forgotten a question. What a start. I've actually forgotten a question mark off the away question. That is unbelievable punctuation, isn't it? Um, anyway, let's crack on anyway. Home or away? Uh, I'll start off easy with home. Okay. So the easy home question for physics is, I want you to state any two of Newton's three laws. Uh, okay, so the first law is that any motion at or any any object at rest will stay at rest, and then a, a, another one is um, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Uh, that was one and three, I think. Have you got any idea what the second one? Uh, well, the way we teach it, um, the second one. Any idea? Uh. I I always those two are the ones that I always know and I always have to look up the third one. Well, that 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 one that, um, just boils down to the equation f equals ma. I can't remember the exact wording of it, but we just teach it straightforward as the equation. Um, anyway, okay. Uh, Tony, would you like to go home or away for your first question? Well, I I'd sound pusillanimous if I if I went for home, so I'll go for the away question first up. You and go... away question first up. Right, the, uh, the away question. The away question comes from the geography specification. And it is, what is the capital of Switzerland? 
Um, isn't that burn? It is burn straight off the uh, straight off the mark with two points. You are. <laughs> I can tell you that you're the only contender I've had so far that has gone away for the first question. So you are so far leading the way. So after the first question, Tony storms in front, taking a two-one lead. Let's get back to the contestants, find out how they feel they're doing, and let's see what question two has in store. That's a good start. Solid. Solid start. How do you think your opponent's getting on? Really badly or okay? Oh, they definitely failed the first question. So I'm probably on top at this point. I, I think absolutely. absolutely. I think they failed hard. You're right. They um, uh, they probably picked a, a home question. Um, and I'm sure they got it right. So I'm thinking it's 2-1 at the moment. 2-1 to you. Okay, let's go to question yeah. two. Um. Home or away? Uh, I'm going to go away again. Right. Uh, away. This time we are looking at French. Um, one of the words our GCSE pupils need to know about French is the French word for cheese. So can you give me the French word for cheese? That would be fromage. It would be fromage. Right. You are absolutely destroying it. Um, question two. <laughs> Question two, um, home or away? Mm, I'll go away this time. Okay, away. I've remembered the question mark this time as well. Um, away, and we're doing languages, and it's French. So how is your French? Not good. No, neither is mine. Um, Non-existent, what... I think, is more, the more accurate term. Well, you, you might get this one. You might. It is used in uh, uh, quite often for a French word. What is the French word for cheese? Um, French word for cheese. Um, is it fromage? It is fromage, two points. That puts you at fantastic. You scored an away goal. Well done. Three points Boom. out of two questions that's a hell of a start hell of a start so both contestants showing a bit of bravery and going away from home both picking up two points so tony still leads but it's four three uh let's go back to home okay it's a little bit more testing this one this one is taken from what will be certainly higher paper gcse um here's the question what is the efficiency of a 60 watt light bulb that gives off 30 joules of heat per second. Uh, the efficiency. Oh, shit. You know, I really don't know the equation for this. Um, if... Uh, I don't know. I'm just shot in the dark. Could it be, like, two? It's efficiency... <laughs> is it would be 50 or well 0.5 or 50 percent um and just for anyone oh, watching, okay yeah just for anyone watching who's doing the gcse's the equation you need is uh, to calculate efficiency it's the useful energy out divided by the total energy in now if we know the light bulb is 60 watts that's the same as saying 60 joules per second that's what power is energy per second um so if 30 of those joules per second are being given away uh, as heat then only 30 joules are the useful energy for light. So 30 divided by 60 will give us our 0.5. Uh, just for anyone watching who yeah. has got that to learn. But you're still on a good... Yeah, so so, I, so my problem was that I, I had the numerator and denominator flipped. I knew that I was going to have to divide something into something. I couldn't remember which way it went for yeah. efficiency. So that's I should really know that. <laughs> but, the but the thing is, you've given a really good exam tip there, because with a lot of questions that the, these kids are going to face, they are going to have to, you know, they, they, they might forget the equation, but they know there's a division or a multiplication and just give it a go. You know, 50 percent of the time they're going to be right and they're going to pick up, you know, the marks they need, you know. So I think you've done exactly the right thing. Um, but it's still a good start. Three out of three. Home or no, away. I'm going to go. So I'm going to go away again. You're going to go away. This time we're taking it from the music specification. And Ooh. I would like to know what is meant by the term suspended chord. Suspended chord. I'm afraid I don't have any idea what, what is meant by the phrase suspended chord. So, bad choice. So, 
A suspended chord is a chord where the third isn't played. Uh, you can replace it. So, for example, uh, a sus4 chord, you'd remove out the third and insert the four uh, instead. So question three isn't kind to either of our contestants as they both trip up. Still 4-3. Let's look at question four. Um, <laughs> right. Home or away? Mm, I'll, I'll go with away this time. I got a nice even split here between the two. Okay. Now, away comes from the history specification. And the question is, Ooh. what was... Uh, no, and I, say this is, I think this is more English history, so you, we'll see. What was a Luddite? A Luddite. A Luddite is a follower of um, a guy that, that never really existed, Ned Ludd. Um, I don't, I don't know, I don't know their beliefs or anything, but I know that I'm, I'm wanting to say that they were some version of Christian, but they, they were followers of uh, Ned Ludd. Now, what I'm going to do? Oh, sorry, go on. <laughs> I'm going to give you half a point. <laughs> well, well, no, I. I, uh, I'm going to have to Google that because obviously uh, that's not the answer that the history specification gives. But if you have given indeed a correct answer, um, then I'm going to have to Google that and I'm going to have to put that into the edit because I don't know. I will, I will not be harsh. Um, so we'll have a steward's inquiry on that one. But the history specification, a Luddite was essentially somebody, it was in the early 1800s. Uh, I think Nottingham, uh, I read that they uh, originated from. But uh, they were workers that kind of went and they trashed the machines in cotton mills and wool mills and stuff like that because they thought the machines were going to put them out of work. Um, so they were kind of against the advancement of new technology because they, they thought it was going to cost them jobs. So they were uh, they went and trashed stuff. But uh, that's... Yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that, that's who I was talking about. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know if they were following a, a certain religious ideal, but I, I do know that they followed a guy named Ned Ludd uh who who did something I, I i didn't exactly remember the smashing of the machines thing at that point but uh the the lead the supposed leader was ned ludd but he was never actually proven to exist so it was it was pretty much just um somebody made it up and then a bunch of people just followed suit it, it, as far as i understand it oh brilliant well I'll, I'll need to google that because it sounds like you know more about them than than i do and uh should that turn out to be true then you will be receiving the points and it turns out that that was true. So after a lot of soul searching, two points to Godless Engineer. Um, it's a history question. And the history question is, okay. what was a Luddite? Now, this is more tied into UK history. So I, yep. I, I'd understand if you've never no, heard I, that term. Um, actually, I do know what a Luddite is. A Luddite is a, um, uh, an anti-technology activist. Um, they used to run around um, sabotaging machinery and um, that sort of thing. They're kind of related to sabotage and saboteurs. They come from the same period in the early Industrial Revolution. So both of them absolutely smashing the OA question. Still only one point in it. Six, five. Let's go on to the next question. Is this question four or five? I can't remember. I believe this is four. So question four. Home or away? Um, I'll go with home. Okay, so home. At GCSE, we teach the difference between uh, conductors and insulators, but we go just a little bit deeper without getting overly technical, and we ask, why are metals good conductors? What is it about the structure of a metal that allows it to be a good conductor? Um, if memory serves, uh, it's because of how electrons move in the outer bands of the atoms. If they can easily move into the outer bands and they can be transferred, I believe those are, um, uh, I can't remember what the, the technical term is, but basically the electrons move from the outer bands of the atoms and they traverse throughout the, the material, uh, in that way. Brilliant. So you've just described what at GCSE, so anyone doing GCSE who's watching this, he's just described what we mean when we talk about delocalized or free electrons. So the sea of free electrons that yeah. we might draw in the diagram, uh, Godless Engineers kind of explain that in more detail. So excellent. Well done. I think I'll go with the away question. I'm liking this. Um, this is a design and technology uh, that has many different names in our school. Some people might call it... Uh, 
DT, resistant materials. Uh, I, there's, there's lots of different names for it. Um, mm -hmm. But the question is essentially, what property of Nomex makes it useful for a certain emergency service? Um, would it be reflectivity? Um, um, I've got no idea. I'm guessing there, so um, I don't know what Nomex is. That would have been an excellent guess because I suppose they all were reflective clothing. And it may, well may be uh, reflective. I don't know. Um, but Nomex is what the fire service um, use for the uh, clothing. Uh... And it's heat resistant or flame resistant. So Godless Engineer manages to hammer home a home point while it's close but no cigar for Tony on the away question that he opted for. So that levels things at 6-6 six, six at the end of the first round. Now we're about to enter round two, which is again another five questions, but this time we're going to be taking a tour of all the GCSE subjects that there are, or at least five of them. Now each uh, contestant will receive one point for getting the questions right, but also an additional point if they can predict whether their opponent got the question right or wrong. With everything to play for, let's begin. We are now into round two. How do you think your opponent is doing at this point? You know what? I missed one. I can only assume that he missed like three. So I'm just going to assume I'm on top at this point because I'm just naturally better at this. I think so. And I think I think from what I've heard, he's been saying or she's been saying some pretty nasty things about you um, So that I've not yet heard. So, uh, you know, hopefully you will go on and win. Question one, the topic is astronomy. And the question is, what are the rules and ridges on the moon? The the rules are... Rills the the and ridges? ridges. Rills and ridges. Um, cr uh, would those be cr like craters from meteorites? You're not far off. Uh, the rules and ridges for when the when the moon did have volcanic activity, they they're basically the remains of the lava tunnels. Um, I think the ones that collapsed okay. downwards with the rills and the ones that are intact to the ridges. Um, so you haven't got that, although you were close. But do you think your opponent will get that? Um, nah, they didn't get that. There's no way. Mm -mm. If I didn't get it, they didn't get it. That's how I'm gonna see it. That's, uh, yeah, absolutely. I have some confidence. I like it. What are the rules and ridges on the moon? What are they? Where, where have they come from? Um, don't they come from the thermal contraction of the moon, right? Aren't they, aren't they um, artifacts of the um, artifacts left in the regolith from the contraction of the moon? Now, I could face a bit of a backlash on this one, but after a little bit of consideration, I really can't accept an answer on rills and ridges without discussing lava channels. So unfortunately, Tony, you have got that one wrong. But how do you think Godless Engineer did? I'm going to guess that my opponent got that right, however, um, because it seems like there are a lot of people who know a lot about their astronomy. So both of you got the question wrong, but only Godless Engineer managed to correctly predict that his opponent would do so. So Godless Engineer, for the first time in the event, moves into the lead, 7-6. So in this question, I'm going to read you a sentence. And in this sentence, you're going to have to translate it into English. Um, if both of you get it wrong, I'm going to award a bonus mark for the person who got the closest um, translation. The sentence is this. Bringen Sie mir sofort das Glas Bier. Bringen Sie mir sofort das Glas Bier. Um... I can only guess that it means bring me the beer. Absolutely. Or getting close. Anything else you want to add? Bring me that awesome beer. <laughs> not, not bad. Bring in the beer. Yeah. Bring, uh, bring to me the fort immediately. So bring me immediately that glass of beer or the glass of beer. Oh, okay. So immediately. Not awesome. But you, you weren't far off. You may have got closer than your opponent. We'll, we'll see. But do you, th uh, do you predict your opponent will get that right? Pro uh, probably as close as I got it. Okay, so not spot on then. Probably not. And if you both get it wrong, I'm going to give a bonus mark for the person who at least got it closest. 
Mm -hmm. So here is the sentence. And I'll read it out as many times as needed. Bringen Sie mir sofort das Glas Bier. Okay. Um, sofort. Uh, uh, bring me a glass of beer, if you please. That is an excellent, uh, excellent effort. Zufort, uh, kind of more means immediately. So kind of bring me immediately or oh, okay. a, a glass of beer. But that is an excellent, right. excellent effort. Do you think your opponent got that right? Um, I think they would have done, yes. Okay, so we'll have a look. Yeah. Um, and if you if, if it turns out you've both got it wrong, I will give a mark for the person who has got the closest translation. Now, in that question, both of our contestants got the question wrong, but in my opinion, they were equally as close to each other for the correct translation, so they'll both pick up a point for that. Unfortunately for Tony, Godless Engineer was the only one of the two that managed to predict that the other person would also get the question wrong. So a total of two points in that question to Godless Engineer and one for Tony, leaving the current score at 9-7 to Godless Engineer. Who proposed the theory of continental drift? Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Um, well, we teach at school, uh, Alfred Wegner. Uh, now, I might be pronouncing that wrong. It might be uh, Wegner. I think it's Wegner. Um, but there was a guy called Abraham something. Um, who originally proposed a theory and Wegner kind of uh, built upon it. So who proposed a theory so, of continental drift? So Alfred Wegener is commonly um, credited with suggesting that theory, isn't he? He is. That is the answer, Alfred Wegener. So uh, do you think your opponent got that right or wrong? Oh, no, definitely not. That's way too obscure for anybody to know. Do you think your opponent got that right or wrong? Um, I don't think they would have gotten that, no. So Godless Engineer gets a question wrong and he also gets his prediction wrong. The same can't be said for Tony, who scores two points on that question, levelling things up at nine all. Things are boiling up nicely with just two questions left. We're going on to food technology. Um, what is meant by the term emulsion? Emulsion? Emulsion in food technology. So I know we get emulsion paints and stuff like that, but can, can you kind of explain it in terms of food technology? Uh, I, mm, no, I, I don't know. Um, isn't an emulsion where you, um, uh, you take something and you... Um, suspend it in a liquid um, uh, so you I'm, I'm thinking sometimes they have emulsions in um, oil and sometimes they have emulsions in water um, I, I'm gonna give you that I'm not I, I am absolutely gonna give you that um, an emulsion as we teach at, at GCSE um, is for example in food technology we know water and oil don't mix but if we use an emulsifier, so egg yolk is what, what we tend to teach um, at school, that will cause the, depending on which one you've got the most of, one to become suspended inside the other, so they will mix, creating an emulsion. So, well done. Yeah. Um, do you think your opponent got mm -hmm. that right? I don't know, probably. Right, give, them, <laughs> give them that. Do you think your opponent got that right? Thank you. Um, no, I don't. So Tony gets a question right and predicts Godless Engineer will get it wrong. Godless Engineer gets a question wrong, but predicts Tony's going to get it right. So that's two points to Tony, one point to Godless Engineer. So the score is 11-10 with one question left. This really could go any way. And the last question um, is an IT question or computer technology or however your school happens to describe it. How is your IT, or How are your IT skills? Um, well, that depends. <laughs> um, if it's a programming question, I'll be quite happy. Um, but if it's something about operating systems and some proprietary software, I won't be very happy. So, well, this is a question on um, binary. Uh, How's your binary? Uh, uh, my binary is reasonable, actually. So, yeah. Well, in that case, I've got a lot of confidence you're going to get this one right. Um, if you okay. are given the digits one, one, 
what number would that yeah uh what number would uh would that represent okay that's three it is three right last question is an it question right in i don't know if you call it i do you call it it in america uh well information technology uh yeah. just basically working with computers yeah yeah uh similar so if i was to give you the number 11 but in binary what would the number 11 actually be 11 uh i believe 11 is b Oh, okay, so the binary is one one. Yes, Sorry. and I'm I'm turning. I'm I'm going from base two or base two to base ten, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that would be three. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I worded that question pretty badly, uh, but absolutely, it would be three. So both of our contestants get the answer right, which means it's currently twelve eleven to Tony. All that's left now is to see whether they could predict whether each other would get the answer right or wrong. Godless Engineer needs to get this prediction correct to have any chance of making this a draw. So, Godless Engineer, did you predict that Tony was going to get this right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I jumped around everywhere. Hexadecimal. <laughs> what is this? Uh, no, it's smashing job. How do you think your opponent got on with that one? Um... I don't, probably pretty bad. I mean, I'm a I'm I'm a computer and software engineer, so I this is like my field. They probably do not know what they're talking about. So unfortunately for Godless Engineer, he makes the wrong prediction, meaning he loses 12-11. So Tony, congratulations, you are through to the next round. And I just want to thank both of you for giving up your time for this educational channel while the schools are closed to take part in quizzes like this. So I really appreciate it. Um, I'll be back in a couple of days with the next round. And we'll see who is playing in that. We'll have another creator against either a subscriber or another creator. Um, hopefully you've played along in the chat and you've picked up one or two things that maybe you forgot from school. Um, but anyway, I'm just waffling now. So bye.